Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for clicking in. Thank you for your likes, overwhelming comments, both negative and positive. Guys, they are all welcome for my haters. You're welcome once again, but I know nowadays we are getting friends from this space. That's one thing that I've understood. People come telling me, Carol, you are talking about some things that I never wanted to hear. But as I watch you more and more, I come to realize some truth out of it. So I'm no longer your hera. Now I am your friend. And I am so, so, so grateful for that. My haters who are becoming my friends, you are always welcome to this channel. And for my subscribers who are always coming back to check on me, I am so grateful, guys. So, so, so grateful. But if you haven't subscribed and you're here watching my videos and you love me, kindly subscribe. Hit on this notification bell so that every time I upload a new video, you'll be the first one to be notified. So, guys, you remember when I came up with a video about my brother Marwa talking about how $50 is, $50 is nothing in America? So if you have $50, $100, it's like nothing in America. So just send it down here in your bahons. Send it down here in your bahons. You remember that video, guys? <laughs> if you remember that video, and I talked about it, and I said, how would you tell someone that uh, some small sense is nothing? Is it not this $50 that will add another $50 to buy something, even if it's nothing in America, does it mean that now because it's nothing in America, it has to be sent in your bahonse? I talked about this issue. I didn't get too many bashers on this one, but it really made sense. Some people told me that, the ones who are in US told me that uh, you can't do anything with $50. So if you can't do anything with $50, what will you do? Send it in your bahonse, right? <laughs> the king of Nyabahunse himself is in New York right now. He went on a shopping spree in New York in the supermarket and he was checking on the on the on the items that were being sold in the supermarket and he was checking and he was like, you know, for me, I just caught up that price of bread. That is what caught me. The bread was around four dollars, right? So if he was saying that $5 is nothing, send it back here. And yet $5 can get you bread. Is that not something? Is bread not something? That was very expensive because that should be around maybe 400 or 450 Kenyan shillings. Which is a lot. You can get a lot with 450. Like you can get a lot of fruits with that. Okay. And surprisingly, the thing that really surprised me was that Mara is a traveler. He's been traveling like all over the world. So if you are traveling all over the world, definitely it's so easy for you, you know, to transform into this other side when you're traveling. Now, maybe you've gotten into this country. It's, it's so easy for you to transform, you know, like so fast. I'm saying this because I have. It, it, it becomes so easy for you to start, you know, catching up with the, with the currency, with the climate, everything around you. You catch up so easily. But it, I, I was surprised that it was so hard for my brother to catch up so fast because he was in the supermarket. This is a supermarket in New York, America. And he's like, oh, my God, everything here is in dollars. Everything here is in dollars. And I'm like. Was it supposed to be in Kenyan shillings? <laughs> Why are you so, so surprised? Is It's like a, some villager who came from a village somewhere. Hmm? And he is surprised that everything is sold in dollars. You know, I'm looking at my brother like, oh my God. Oh my God. I'm, all, I'm almost closing my eyes like, oh my God. Oh my God. What is he doing? What is he saying? I told you this one is our popular guy, our celeb on the streets of YouTube. He's our celeb. He's the one who is going out there to represent us. You don't need to go out there and start embarrassing yourself. When you start embarrassing yourself out there, we also feel embarrassed. Me, I was embarrassed. Honestly, I was like, oh my God, oh my God, what is he saying? It's New York, for God's sake. Everything is sold in dollars. What do you mean it's in dollars? You expect 
these things to be in Kenyan shillings, like for real? Like for real? There was a time when Mara went to Nairobi, that time that he was, he was with this Swiss girl, and he was doing a, a room tour. And I was looking at him like, oh my God. He couldn't even mention some of the things that were in that room. Like a cooker in that room, there was an electric cooker or was it a gas cooker? A cooker, you know, a cooker where you cook from. He was calling that place a, a fridge or something. And I was like, don't you know how to differentiate a fridge from a cooker or a table from? So confusing. Also, there's a time when he went to visit Michele Ponte in Italy. And he was served cheese, like mozzarella cheese. And he was telling Ponte, in fact, he was asking Ponte, what is this? And then Ponte was explaining to him, this is cheese, it's mozzarella cheese. And I was like, who doesn't know mozzarella cheese? According to what Ponte was explaining to him, he was telling him, this cheese is not easily found in Nairobi. You can only find it, you can only find it in uh, um, Carrefour kind of stores and stuff like that. And I was looking at Marwa eating cheese and he was so surprised eating cheese like it was his first time. And I was like, who doesn't know cheese? Cheese is something that is just found in our local supermarkets. We have cheese almost everywhere. I do prepare my pizza here with cheese, mozzarella cheese everywhere. Like who doesn't know cheese? Unfortunately, my brother doesn't know cheese. And he was like trying to eat it. And he's like, hey, it's like milk. It. And you know, I'm looking at this man and I'm like, this guy has traveled for how many years? And in how many countries he's been? He's never come across cheese like for real, like for real. I was very surprised, honestly. I haven't traveled that much. But at least I know every time when someone is traveling, you have to go out there and explore. You are going to explore and learn new things, new food, new culture, everything. So what is it that is being brought here at the table? From these traveling experiences, you want to tell me that after seven years living in Colombia, America, you've never come across cheese until the moment you've come to Italy. <laughs> But you, you are a traveler. You must know these things. In fact, remember you have boys in Yabahons. Those upcoming YouTubers right now, they're looking at you. They, are, they want to know the things that you are doing. They want to be enlightened. They want you, their king. Because now they believe in you so much. You know? They want to learn from you. You have to give your best. You, you don't need to leave some question marks behind here. Remember, you've created your own palace. You are the king here and you have to do things right. People in Yabahonza right now, it's not like before when you used to travel and people could not know even where you are, what you are doing. This time it's different. Because this Nyabahonza people now, boys, the new YouTubers, I don't know, they're like over 20, I think. Many of them. They are looking at you. They are following you very, very, very closely. So you have to be very careful with the things that you say out there. You need to be very careful. And apart from these people from Nyabahons, we, we as Kenyans, we are here looking at you. Some of us have never been to America, but we would love to be in America. So show us very well these things. Show us. You don't need to be leaving us with questions in our heads. You know, you go to America and you start wondering why are things being sold in dollars? What do you want us to, to think? Very embarrassing. The other day, he was telling people, when he was in Yabahonze, he told people on his videos that spare that money that you want to buy your shoes, your Jordan Air, your Reebok, your what? Spare that money and send it in the village. Because for you, you thought that money is just like nothing. That money has value only in the village, but not up there. 
Now you are out here. It's only day one and now you're feeling the heat. The heat is hitting you so well. <laughs> you're wondering why a bread is over four point five dollars. You're just a small bread like this. You are already worried. Hmm? And now since you are there abroad, can you send those your dollars back in your bahons? Can you? That is my question. Are you feeling that heat? The five dollar that someone else would have gone to buy bread that he will he would have sent, he would have been sending it to you. Can you now send that five dollar back? Can you? That is my question right now. Because already you're feeling the heat. The heat is just too much for you. You're like, oh my God, oh my God, why is this? Why? You're just wishing that everything will be in Kenyan shillings. You are representing us and you are in America. Start behaving like an American. And I know that Maro has been in America before. This is not his first time or the second time or even the third time. He's been in America for a very long time. Why is he behaving like Uncle Mo? If it was Uncle Mo or Mayugno doing this thing at the supermarket, I would have understood. But now Marwa asking why things are in dollars. And you know that is not Kenya. And Marwa himself, does he even go to the supermarket? I've never seen bread in their home. I only see them eating chapatis, chapatis, chapatis. And chapatis are always there in the weekends because that is the moment that their mom comes in. I don't know what they eat during the, during the week. All that time that he's been in the village. Matoke and those, you know, organic food. I don't think even Marwa knows the price of bread in Kenya because I've never seen bread in their home. But now, just catching a bread... In US, it's just chilling him. It's giving him chills, giving him too much. <laughs> the guy is worried already. And it's just day one. And he has $10,000 in his pockets, at least before the end of the month. That was very surprising on my part. It was. I don't know what to think about it, guys. Leave your comments down below. Let me know what you think about what Marwa or how Marwa was behaving the first day he stepped his foot in the supermarket. Leave your comments down below. Let me know what you think, guys. Now, there's this other thing that Cherono and African Tea did on Cherono's channel yesterday. So Cherono decided to prank tea. African tigress. And this prank did not go well with African tigress. And in my mind, I think that it's gonna like raise some issues. Like honestly, African tea did not take it so well. And uh, in fact, she did not even accept that that was a prank. She was like, it cannot be a prank. If it would have been a prank, we, we should both be laughing. And I think this is something that you are just planning, something that is in your head and blah, 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 and stuff like that. So I was just thinking like, this thing might bring problems. You know, these pranks, eh? they cost a lot. Pranks are very expensive, by the way. A prank can damage someone's life. A prank can damage someone's health, even. A prank is, is not something good. It's not something that you can do on a friend. Because it leaves some question marks, like somewhere there. Chirono comes up and tells me, uh, African tigress, that my house is small. I am tired of, you know, hosting uh, YouTubers. They come here and then they start creating drama and blah, 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 blah. So I'm just feeling like, you know, you should leave. You see my house. You... And then it's really getting into African tigress. Like, it's really getting into her into her veins and she's really feeling it she's trying to stay calm because you know she has to appreciate the time that she's been given in that house anyway and even not knowing that she's on camera but i'm not even sure if really 
this thing was really planned or not. Because most of the time these people are speaking English and I'm not sure if that is the way most Kenyans do. Anyway, Cherono kept it in English, so a African tigress had to like, go with the flow. But by the end of the day, I felt like it was so intense. The prank was so intense and African tigress was not happy about it. Um, it was a prank anyway, so it, has, it had to be published on YouTube because it was a prank. But the way African tigress took it, she never took it so lightly. Now, let me talk from our own tribal lines. Yeah, I'm not being tribalistic, but this is how things happen here. You know, in Kenya, people act differently according to their tribe. Like, th there's a way a certain tribe is known for something, for a certain trait or something. Like, Kikuyus are known for something. When you mention about something, people will be like, oh, Kikuyus do that. When you mention about something, they will say, oh, Luos do that. When it comes to anger issues and keeping things so, so intensely, you know, like keeping things in your heart for a long time and holding anger and stuff like that. African Tigress tribe, they do that. For me as a Kenyan, I took it that way. I was like, we, mkale anacheza na mkisi. Mkisi <laughs> That's how it happens here. It's going, she's going to understand that it was a prank, but she's going to keep that thing for a very long time. Believe me, that is how it works here. Cherono is a Kalenjin. Kalenjins, they are very jokey kind of people. Very, very jokey, you know. Like they don't keep grudges. They are too jokey. They are too outgoing. They are they, just so free-spirited kind of human beings. But Kisi is way. Kisi. A Kisi person. Hey. They don't take things. They take things very seriously. They don't like jokes. They don't like, um, you know, uh, you know, l l laugh, you know, they're, they're so, they're those things that these kissy people are known, you know, they are known for. They don't take jokes lightly. They're very serious people, bitter people, harsh people, in fact. <laughs> True story, I'm telling you guys. So the, I'm talking this out of my own experience, you know, as a Kenyan, talking on the tribal lines. So... I was looking at this whole thing like I was not looking at this is Cherono and this this is African Tigress. No, I was looking at this one is a Kalenjin and this is how these people do their things. And now this one is a Kisi and this is how these people take things, you know. So I was like putting this uh, this tribe together. <laughs> I don't know guys what you think about this for those who know what I'm talking about. I don't know what you think about it. I know there are kisses in the house. You can agree with me. Me, I fear kisses. Why? I, I, I've mingled with them. I've been with them around the world. I've been with kisses. Even uh, in the diaspora and back at home, I've mingled with these people. I fear them. They don't joke. They're serious people. You know, straight to their word. Very serious. They don't like jokes around them. <laughs> and yet, from our side, we are too jokey. You know, we want to joke around, laugh around. You'll be talking about the same thing. Other people will be laughing, but a kissy person won't laugh about it. And you'll be like, what's wrong with this one? That is how they are, guys. That is how they are. I don't know what you think. Kisses in the house. Hello, come and leave your comments down below. Let me know what you think about this whole video. Leave your comments down below, like this video, and subscribe. Please subscribe, subscribe if you haven't subscribed. And let's meet on the next one. Love you.